Okay, welcome. This is just a short video to tell you in a few words about the statistics of who passed and failed last year's INF1 OP 2014-15 because I did a little bit of work on looking at factors that seem to have influenced that and it was suggested to me that it might be useful for this year's cohort to see that in advance so that if you're in danger of failing the course or not doing as well as you might like to, um, you get to see that in advance and have a chance to think about how you might make sure that that doesn't happen. So as I mentioned already, um, characteristic of the INF1 OP is that we have a very wide range of sorts of expertise in the students coming in. Some people have lots of experience already, others don't have lots of experience already. Um, and as you'd expect, the marks in the course at the in the exam at the end are very widespread. So I want to discuss both ends of this graph. Um, let me remark that this is in many ways a very bad graph. Anybody who knows anything about statistics is probably um, screaming at the screen. Um, it doesn't have a y-axis and you'll see that this bar that represents people who got exactly a hundred is the same width as all the others, but there you go, so sue me, I'm not teaching statistics. The first thing to notice is that lots of people did very well indeed. Okay, This course in the final exam has quite a low ceiling. Okay, It's possible to go into that exam, whether or not you knew any Java before you started, um, and find it very easy and do it perfectly, and that's great. I love it when students do that. Please be in that group. And especially if you're trying to go to go on to do further informatics in courses in your second and third year, this is the group you want to be in. I've suggested before I think you should really be thinking of 80% as the pass mark. And once you've got 80, you might as well get 100. On you go. We have a widespread here, which is basically people who've understood some aspects of the course and not others. And no, that's okay. But you almost certainly will have to understand the things that you didn't understand first time round um, before you can use them in your second year courses, for example. And that will take effort that you'd probably rather be spending on the new material of the second year. So it's a good idea to try to move yourself up towards this end of the graph, because that will make you have a much more fun and easier time in the second year and onwards. Let's have a look at this group down here, which is failing. And this group, of course, is the group that um, causes us some concern in the examiner's meetings. It's a higher percentage of failures than we would like, and it's certainly something that we're concerned about. So what's going on there? Well, most of the people who fail do so because they get zero. How do you get zero in a Java programming exam? Well, basically, you get zero because your code doesn't compile or because it doesn't pass the very basic J unit tests that you're given in the exam. So it's really, really important that you learn to use Eclipse and you learn to run and interpret J unit tests. We give you quite a bit of support in trying to do that. There's a, there's a very basic J unit task for you to do in week two, so please do it. I will chase you a bit if you don't do it, but you are not at school now, you're at university, so in the end it's going to be up to you. Um, the compiler and the JUnit tests are there for your benefit. They will help you to get your code right, so do that. I think we see quite a lot of evidence there that there are students who simply haven't really engaged with the course. But all is not lost. Um, passing INF1 OP is, is very much about how much work you've done, not about what talent you have for programming. And that's shown by the fact that when we go on and look at the similar graph for the reset exam that takes place in August, we still see the vast majority of people now pass at reset. You have to remember, of course, that not everybody sitting the reset exam is somebody who failed the main exam. There are always a few people who were ill at the time of the main exam or whatever and are allowed to take the reset exam um, because their main exam is what we call null sat. Um, but that doesn't account for very much of these high marks. Most of these high marks really are people who failed at the main diet and then they put in the work between the main exam and the reset exam and they ended up passing very well at that point. Um, so if you do fail the, fail the main exam, you can do that. but it entails you coming back to Edinburgh and interrupting your summer and having a bit of stress and dealing with having failed and much better to pass the first time round. Why don't you just do that instead? Last year I had quite a bit of information about the students because I could look at the progress form that I asked students to fill in every week from week 2 to week 10 and I'm asking you to do the same this year. 
And what that gives us is quite a bit of evidence that the people who failed the first time round really weren't people who had been diligently doing the course but found it very hard. Rather, they were really people who hadn't been engaging in the things that the course, is, the course offered. They were people who hadn't been turning up to tutorials or hadn't attended the mock exam, hadn't even submitted the progress form, hadn't done the J-unit exercise that I'm giving you to do in week two, and so on. The only real exception was that it looked a bit as though people who were not first-year informatics students were more likely to fail than people who are first-year informatics students. And I guess that's what you'd expect, because somebody who's essentially decided that they want to come and do a degree in computer science or a related subject can be expected to be somebody who's pretty confident that they are going to enjoy and be good at programming. Um, certainly all is not lost. The majority of people who were not first-year informatics students passed, and many of them passed very well indeed. Um, but people who did engage with the course overwhelmingly passed in the main diet. Um, but just a final reminder, um, passing is all very well. What I really want you to do is come out passing extremely well. I'd like even even more people than last year to get 100%. Um, see if you can be one of those and, and go for it. And everybody will be very happy and you will have a great time at Edinburgh in the rest of your degree. That's all I wanted to say.